Welcome on board the Azura. Azura is a P&O ship and it's massive. I haven't got a clue where I'm going. I'm just sort of wandering around like a headless chicken. Lido, deck 15. I'm a bit confused. This clock here says it's 7am. This clock here says it's six. And my phone says that it's five. So I don't have a clue what the time is. There's absolutely no one around, which is a crazy, crazy thought considering there are 3,000 people on this ship. So I am gonna go ahead and do some time lapse. moment when you think I'm taking a photo but I'm doing a video. So I'm having a little walk down in Stavanger and I haven't really found anything to photograph so I'm gonna go for some street photography. Now one thing I always do when I'm stuck for ideas is I look for obviously people in motion and I also look for juxtapositions now I know that's a word that's used quite juxtaposition it sounds a bit arty farty doesn't it. So if someone's for example Selling the big issue outside a Rolex shop, that sort of thing, you know? I don't know, you never know what you're waiting for. You've just got to have your camera ready and just shoot. So what I like to do is just try and shoot, I guess, political sort of shots. So street photography, obviously you want to tell a story. But so far, Stavanger is a beautiful little town. Laura and her mum have just gone shopping. So yeah, I'm just sort of armed at the ready take some pictures. And a couple of my street photography go-to's, one of them is taking pictures of people that are getting their pictures taken. I just find that humorous. But I do that in weddings, I do that all the time anyway. And I look for zebra crossings. I just get that classic Abbey Road look, which is just people crossing. Try and get them halfway, snap it. That was a huge giant turtle, tortoise. Do you want your picture taken by a tortoise? I am talking to my girlfriend, by the way. It's fantastic. Yeah, there's another tip. Look for giant animals. If I'm taking a picture of a scene, imagine a, a scene. That's probably the broadest example I've ever given. When I add people into a scene, I, my approach to it is to find either a person that really complements the scene with their style or someone that really juxtaposes it really sort of conflicts with it. If there's someone in the middle, if, if it's someone in the middle, then it's not such a great picture, I think. If you really want to develop as a photographer, pun intended, I think that one of the best ways you can do that is by taking your camera out on the street because moments arise all the time. So you can snap instinctively and get used to snapping on the mo you know, spur of the moment. Landscape photography, you have lots and lots of time. Yeah, the ace of fat. How you doing, mate? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Are you right? It's two of the guys from the cruise I met earlier. Now, because there's zero pressure involved as well, which is one of the best things about it. Whereas at a wedding, you've obviously only got one chance to capture certain shots. So it's a really, really good opportunity to just try and practice some skills. And if you can get ultra confident, you can then set up some shots and you can point people in the right direction and you can say that's not another fan that's Laura and you can post some portraits if you're confident enough to ask people 
to have their picture taken. So it's back on the ship now. I think that's it for some street photography. Gonna make some more friends like Clive. Ready to go. Oh my god, <laughs> he jumped then. <laughs> he jumped. <laughs> 